Hey, my name is Tyler Bronski. You're watching my YouTube channel where I'm sitting down with recognizable faces in entertainment and the digital space. Today's guest, he's a 21 year old South African music artist currently based in Boston. Music's been his blood ever since he was just four years old. He's mastered the guitar, the piano, the ukulele, then later honing in on the music production side of things. And by the time you hear this interview, you will have released a new song called Bad Luck. Maybe it's just my bad love, a bad love. Josh Moreira. Josh, thanks for taking the time to do this. How are you doing, bro? Good and you, man. Thank you so much for having me, Tyler. I really appreciate it. Super excited for this. My pleasure, Josh. My pleasure. Now I'm curious. I say how much music has been in your blood since you were a kid. If I were to meet you as a kid, what would uh, a young Josh look like? A uh, young Josh was always singing, always playing guitar. Um, there was a time where grades were definitely the second option in my life. It was guitar, it was piano, uh, it was it was just performing for my family, um, and that's kind of where it started. Uh, look, I think I was quite a quite a happy kid, um, and it just it was a, a a nice time to to make music because you barely had the stresses of life, um, and obviously as you grow older things change. But I'm glad that it still stuck with me. Absolutely, man. I'm glad to see it as well. Um, now, I know there's a few artists out there that really serve as inspirations for you. Jeremy Zucker, John Bellion, Will Lindley, another South African artist. How would you say they do serve as inspirations for you? So Jeremy Zucker for me is, is my, my favorite artist ever. Look, I went to watch his concert around two weeks ago here in Boston, and it was absolutely incredible. The thing I love about his music is the artistic nature of it. You see, so in, in a lot of my songs, you'll find um, different sounds in the left and the right um, earphone and mixing things in stereo so it sounds unique um, as opposed to just your your straight mono down the middle. Um, John Bellion does kind of the same. He's very experimental with his voice. And that's something I've really taken into consideration when producing my songs. And Will Lindley is... For me, he's, he's great because he's really representing um, the South African name, the South African blood. And it's nice to see South Africans getting finally the recognition they deserve. I don't know if you know Tyla as well. She's doing really well at the moment. Um, a massive South African artist. It's nice to really see these things. Um, so I've, I've got my inspirations of the music and then obviously of careers as well to, to strive towards. We talk about take inspiration from the career side as well and you mentioned um will and one thing will's really good at is um even the content creation side of things mm -hmm. you know, obviously all of them are talented music wise but will has seemed to really understand how to use social media and like i said yeah. creating content to build a career in the music industry really quickly yeah. just in the span of uh, two three years um mm -hmm. what do you take away from following his content strategy online um when you see his posts and just understanding that is a part of it uh, when it comes to building a, a name in the music industry. Yeah, the biggest thing I've noticed about Will is his personality um, in his content. It doesn't seem like if I had to meet him in person, he'd be any different. And I think that's what has really sold me on him and a lot of other fans. And it's something I've always been a very shy person. So I'm only now kind of breaking into that, just be yourself in your content you know just speak um just speak in your videos to your fans don't don't put up a persona and it's something i'm starting to learn but will manage to get it from day one and it's, it's quite a nice inspiration to see you know that people oftentimes love you more for yourself than if you were fake all right i mentioned the intro you have a new song coming out called bad luck how would you say that type of song aligns with the type of music you want to make and i'll let you take that however you want whether tone wise whether the storytelling um how's that um like i said align with mm. the type of songs you want to make in the future i've always tried to make music that um people can relate to i think my biggest goal in my music is if one person comes up to me and says your song got me through a really hard time or you know i really i really um love the lyrics that you put in this song um i think that'd be enough for me and bad luck comes from a from a tough time in my life um writing it producing it 
it was my way of escaping that tough time. And look, I've been trying to make a few more upbeat songs. I was always a very um, more artistic producer in a sense of I was not the greatest at writing hooks. I was more focused on just making it as dreamy and as unique as possible. And while that served a purpose in teaching me how to make those unique sounds, they now also like help me add to my mainstream music. And you know, a single's got to be catchy. I love writing hooks now. I love making up incredible melodies and just adding and experimenting with those sounds, adding incredible drum beats. So look, the type of music I'm making now is quite different to the stuff I released a few years ago on my EP Homegrown. Um, but I much prefer, you know, this kind of music because it's something I can relate to. It's something that's gotten me out of a hard time. And the tracks, personally, I love them. So yeah. Well, it sounds like just music is, you know, it really is your passion and something you're just mm -hmm. always doing in your free time. I know you have yeah. said though, um, you, you have a goal of releasing a new song at least every month for the entirety of 2024. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're yeah. still working, I know, to make music your full-time career one day. So you still live in a very normal life and you know, balancing yeah. both. Uh, what is that process like to, because um, it's a lofty goal at the end of the day to yeah. really try and uh, reach that. Yeah, um, I'll tell you a funny story actually um, in re with regards to like that month, uh, monthly song 2024. Um, Bad luck, I actually made in a week. It was produced because I was, I was, I released better. And I said, wow, you know, I have two weeks and I don't like the song I was going to release. It's way too, it's, it's, I need to fix it up. I need to make it sound a lot better. I'm not happy with it. I sat down for a week straight. We, I was so lucky we had a break for school. I sat down a week straight. I think I sat in front of my laptop six hours a day. I phoned my friend and I said, please, I need an album artwork by tomorrow. He drew the whole thing for me. One week, Let's bad luck, go. mixed, mastered. I don't know how I did it. I hope I can pull it off again. Um, for 2024, I've got some nice ones lined up. I've got ballads. I've got more artistic songs. Um, obviously, you know, your, your mainstream stuff as well. But balancing is, has been very difficult. Um, and it's good that you pointed it out because it's hard for artists, especially in college, um, with the workload, getting back from class, you're tired, but you want to make music, but you, you can't because your brain, you know, it's just not functioning. And it's something I've just almost had to persevere through. I've figured out now that making music before class, oh my goodness. great idea. Oh. You know, if I sit in front of my laptop for an hour, uh, it, it comes out really nicely. So that's kind of my way of combating it. Yeah, no, that's a good answer because you really do need to, hey man, I've been there too. I mean, been there for this type of stuff, about trying to yeah. go to college, balance doing the media stuff. And yeah, you just got to figure yeah. out when's an optimal time for you. When does your brain work mm -hmm. best? Some people are more yeah. morning people, some people more night, you know? Um, yeah, and it's, it's not it's easy. It's a tough process. It's really not easy. Yeah, no. really I mean, tough I guess one. to that point a little bit, and we've touched on it a bit, but mm. like I said, just trying to figure out that balance and studying all these different artists the way you say you have i mean it's the million dollar question but what do you think you need to continue to do to just you know really keep trying to grow your name in this industry um mm. i know um like you said it might feel far away right now but um you obviously mm. have seemed like the drive to want to do this full time one day yeah. so what do you think you need to continue to do for me tyler i think the biggest thing is consistency um, just posting, that's why I've set the goal for 2024 is a song a month, you know. I don't want them to be bad, but obviously putting in my all and making them good, that's the most important thing. Giving my fans a song every month, I think would be incredible. Um, but the one thing I've also learned is don't strive for a huge name. Strive for making music that connects with people because it, it becomes a point of when you're trying to make music just, oh, let, I need to reach Bieber level heights or this person's level heights. It becomes such a chore. Oh, I've got to do this now and this now. I've got to manage the PR. I've got to mix this song. 
what I've started focusing on is when I sit down and make a song, it's what is going to connect to my audience, not what is going to get on radio. It's, it's important to really focus on your fans, the people that support you and give them the music that you're happy with, that you had a blast making. Bad Luck was so fun to make. Um, even my song before that better had the time of my life and that's what it's about and I think that's just honestly what I'm going to continue doing I love that man yeah at the end of the day you got to be happy with your work first exactly um, if you expect other people to enjoy it as well yeah um, all right mm. last one for you a fun question and you kind of mm. mentioned Jeremy Zucker is one of your favorite artists you got a chance to see him earlier um you know, during your time in Boston, mm-hmm. we both have lived in Boston. Boston obviously has a lot of venues and, uh, you know, just yep. concerts happening all the time there. Um, mm-hmm. any favorite concerts of yours, um, uh, just over the years, over the years in grade, in, in ninth grade, I managed to see Justin Bieber. Uh, he was a big, he was a big inspiration for me at the time. Um, now it's obviously changed to Zucker, which was one of the top three moments of my life. I won't even lie to you. It was incredible. But there was actually one concert I went to that actually shaped my whole life. And I was three years old um, and my father took me to a Brian Adams concert back home. And from that moment, my parents told me, I can't remember, but from that moment, it was singing galore for me. All I would do is sing and 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 want to perform Brian Adams songs in front of them. And from that point on, was it was really a defining um, thing for me. So... That, in terms of importance in my life, that Brian Adams one is probably up there. But in terms of the best concerts I've seen, Bieber, Pop, and, you know, Jeremy was was otherworldly for me. So, yeah. That's a good last right there, for sure. Yeah. All right, he's Josh Marrera. Josh, uh, thank you again for the time. Uh, good luck to you. Thank and you. we'll be continuing to follow your journey. Thank you so much, Tyler. Thank you for having me.